Hello, and welcome to the EKG Guy. We realize that while we have hundreds of free lessons available for you, we know the best way to actually get better at interpreting EKGs is by seeing and doing more. So from this week moving forward, we're going to try to do a new EKG each week. We will do it with the basic case presentation of the patient along with the EKG. We won't get into all the different lab values in history unless they are significant and noteworthy to the case. Sometimes we may add interesting clinical facts, but the goal here is to be able to interpret any EKG that's put in front of you. Now there's a system I want to try for approaching EKGs, and I'm sure it will evolve as we move forward, but let's go with this for now. So notice that we have the patient's clinical presentation and then the EKG below. On the right side of the screen are the areas I want us to go through. First, you will try to do this on your own and then we'll review it together. So the first one is regularity. That is, are we dealing with a regular or irregular rhythm? Then there's the heart rate. Then we have the rhythm origin. That is, where is the rhythm actually starting from within the heart? Then we get into conduction. We get into atrial, AV or atrioventricular and intraventricular or IV conduction, looking at if the conduction is prolonged or not. Then we look at the waveforms, which would include all the waves, the segments, and the intervals. Then we have anything else, meaning is there anything else we have missed or still need to mention? And finally, we will give an interpretation of the EKG. So we'll give this approach a try. Like I said, it will likely change as we move forward and improve, but it's important to have some system systematic approach to reading EKGs. There are several approaches out there, but most of them seem a bit silly. The main thing is that you create a system that works for you and you continue to follow that each time you read an EKG. Anyways, welcome to the first EKG of the week. Let's get started. So our patient this week is a 77-year-old female that presents with chest pain, along with the EKG present here. Pause the video and take a few minutes to go through it yourself, looking at each of the things we discussed. When you're ready, start the video and we'll go over it together. All right, so our 77-year-old female comes in with chest pain and we see this EKG. So like we said, the first step is looking at the regularity, okay? And what's the regularity of this rhythm? Well, on first impression of the EKG, you probably notice that the rhythm appears irregular. Not only is it irregular, but it's irregularly irregular, okay? So what do we mean by that? All right, so we're saying it's irregular, irregular, okay? So when we talk about regularity, what I want you to focus on is the QRS complexes, okay? They're the easiest to see, and if you look from here to here, the R to R interval of that is different from the next, okay? And if we were to look at the one that follows, notice this is different, okay? So they're constantly different R to R intervals throughout here, all right? All throughout this whole rhythm strip, you'll notice that there is no regularity to our R to R intervals, so we call it irregular, and because there's no regularity at all, so like not in sinus arrhythmia where we can see an irregular rhythm, but there is some regularity to it, there's no regularity to this, so we call it irregularly irregular, okay? Now the next thing is the rate, the heart rate. Well, because we have an irregular rhythm, we can get an estimate of the heart rate by adding up the complexes going across the EKG and then multiplying that number by six because the whole EKG represents 10 seconds, all right? So just to review, remember that the EKG going all the way across here represents 10 seconds, all right? So if we count those complexes going across and then multiply that by six, we can get the heart rate. So let's do that here. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So there's nineteen QRS complexes going across. Okay, so nineteen times six is one hundred and fourteen beats per minute, okay? So above 100, above our adult normal range, so this is a faster rhythm or tachycardic rhythm. Now, how about the rhythm origin? Well, you can see that we have narrow QRS complexes, so it must be a supraventricular rhythm, meaning that it's coming above the ventricles. However, you can't really make out any P waves here, so it's certainly not a sinus rhythm. 
So it must be coming from somewhere within the atria, okay? So no P waves present here, all right? We have our QRS complex. Then afterwards, that's our T wave. Again, no P waves present, and you'll see that throughout, all right? And because we said it's a narrow complex, it's likely supraventricular because it's coming above the ventricles. Remember, with ventricular rhythms, we usually see the wide complex or wide QRS complexes, okay? So the rhythm origin is likely from the atrium, okay? Now we have atrial conduction. Well, like we said, we can't make any, any P waves out, and the P waves represent atrial depolarization. So because we don't see that, there's no clear atrial conduction here. Okay, so we can just put an X there. How about AV conduction or atrial ventricular conduction? Well, again, no P, clear P waves that we can make out, so there's no clear PR interval. So again, no clear AV conduction here as well. Okay, next we have intraventricular IV conduction. Here we look at the duration of the QRS complexes. Normal QRS duration is between 80 and 110 milliseconds, or about two to three small boxes. Well, we can see narrow QRS complexes that are within normal limits. In fact, the QRS duration here is actually 84 milliseconds, okay? And that's within our normal range. So we, in fact, have normal intraventricular conduction, okay? So we can write normal here. How about the waveforms? Well, P waves, we said, were not present. The T waves are present, asymmetric, and appear normal. PR segment and interval, we can't make out without the P waves present. The ST segment does not appear to be elevated or depressed anywhere, and the QT interval appears within normal limits. So there's no major waveform abnormalities that we can see here. Hopefully you got that as well, okay? So we will just put that we check them. So is there anything else we're missing here? Well, there's one minor point I want to, you to be aware of, and that has to do with the baseline. Now, the baseline is not isoelectric in some areas, which may be due to skeletal inter or interference, okay? Or it may likely do, in this case, due to chaotic atrial activity, all right? So if you notice here, notice that this baseline here, you can see some of that rhythm is not flat, okay? And that may be due to skeletal interference, or it's more likely this chaotic atrial activity that we see here, all right? That's causing that. We have no clear uh, atrial contractions, okay, or atrial depolarization because we can't make out those P waves. So finally, what is our interpretation? Well, we have a fast, irregularly irregular rhythm with no clear and well-defined P waves along with normal intraventricular conduction. So this is a case of atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response or AFib with RVR. You may hear it as, okay? So AFib with RVR. So that's atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response, okay? And why is it rapid? Well, we said our rate is above 100, okay? Why is it AFib? Well, we have no clear P waves, and we said that the rhythm is irregularly irregular, okay? So again, we have a fast rhythm, an irregularly irregular rhythm, no clear, well-defined P waves, and with normal interventricular conduction, okay? So that's our interp interpretation here is AFib with RVR. So in conclusion, we have a 77-year-old female patient with chest pain that has this EKG that shows AFib with RVR. Well, that's the end of this week's EKG of the week. I hope you learned something. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below if you like what we're doing. It helps us a lot and we really appreciate your support. Subscribe to the EKG Guys YouTube channel for free access to more than 300 videos, including both pediatric and adult EKG courses. We're the largest, fastest growing EKG resource in the world.